We're going to call this regular meeting of the Kingsville City Commission to order. It's Monday, July 22, 2013, at 6 p.m. All five commission members are present. We open our meetings with a prayer and pledge of allegiance. If you care to join us, please stand. Mark, come on, please. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. We ask that you lead out and direct us tonight in doing the business of the city. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Next order of business is to approve the minutes of the last meeting. So move, Mayor. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Banks to approve the uh, previous minutes. Second by Commissioner Luger. Roll call vote. Commissioner Garcia? Yes. Commissioner Luger? Yes. Commissioner Becker? Yes. Commissioner Benya? Yes. Mayor Dewey? Yes. I rescind my vote. Yeah, he's going to abstain. Abstain. <laughs> All right, let's go to the public hearings. We've got four public hearings. It's uh, 602. The first public hearing is regarding condemnation proceedings for structures located at 528 South 18th Street here in Kingsville. And Robert, I'll see you. Thank you. Excuse me, Ronnie. Uh, we'll have an opportunity, ma'am, for you to uh, address any of the issues you want at public comments. Well, we're not there yet, okay? Well, you brought it up. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. You're okay, right. you see, you just we're going to give you an opportunity. Robert, go ahead. <laughs> this is a uh, public hearing regarding the uh, 528 or South 18. South 18. And uh, this is a, uh, a house that's uh, unsecured, it has uh, no roof. Uh, numerous broken windows, uh, building is not secure. Uh, the only thing securing it is uh, curtains uh, from the windows and uh, uh, blinds, really, that are the only thing on there right now. We went through all the process. Uh, last year, uh, we sent out our notice of violation. Uh, this year, we are trying to begin the conversation. Okay. Any questions or comments? Okay, this is a public hearing. So if you want to speak about this particular issue, you, all you have to do is come up and tell us who you are and where you live, and you have five minutes to talk about this particular subject. Mayor Kwame, you to give you a package for you. Can you tell us who you are and where you My live? My name is Juan Diaz. I'm the owner. And my family lives there. Address? 52618. That's the mailing address. You said you said y'all live in this house? This yes, house? we're repairing. You're living in this house right now? That's our homestead. Okay. Okay. And uh, would you like to be handed? But you say you live at 526. Yes, that's the mailing address. And, but I'm looking at this house. It doesn't have, doesn't have a roof on it. Yes, sir. I'm going to go through uh, the reason. That, uh, you have five minutes. Okay. You better get started. All right. <clears throat> Basically, uh, my family and I uh, come in strong disagreement to the condemnation of our homestead. Uh, my general attorney, Ross and Matthew, and my local attorney, Timothy Downey, recommend that uh, at all possible be rescheduled for a hearing so they could uh, represent me in this hearing. Also to request information on appealing procedures uh, that would ensure my family's right and the decision made in this hearing. But before I, I, I do that, I would like to uh, permit uh, me to inform the uh, committee of certain situations that uh, or pertinent legal matters, uh, as uh, the gentleman uh, mm -hmm. referred to, he sent notices. 
those notices, I was informed by my postman that they were sent to a different person named Juan Riojas. My name is Juan Rio, or first. Uh, second of all, I, in that package, you have certified letter from a, a letter that was sent to me in April by the building inspector, and I informed him there what is uh, what the procedure has been doing for what had electrical that just did the updating the elect electrical uh, 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 wiring. Second of all, the re-roofing, that's why there's no roof, is down to, as you can see in the pictures, they're down to the rafters. The, uh, the other thing that is very pertinent, that's on May 28th, the part was scheduled to be turned on, and the reason was that no inspection has been made on uh, turning on the power after all the electric has been done. Uh, the uh, situation on, on, on the repairs, as is numerated right there, this is for the information of the commission. The, in 1903, the windows, as I stated there in the beginning, five new windows, and there's pictures in there too. Replace all the exterior doors, the house was insulated, we repair the siding was done, and I had the documentation. In 02, again, like I said, the electric updated by Santana Electric, it's all new, and uh, the relaying of the roof is waiting for the power to be turned on. It has never been done. Since. And I do have a plan as to the additional uh, uh, future plans, which is in two phases that I, uh, I am implementing because uh, uh, I did talk to Mr. Rodriguez and he stated that uh, uh, he was more concerned about uh, stuff that was inside the house. So I also did consult an engineer on uh, the condition of the property and, and two general contractors. And I have a general contractor right here with me and they can uh, testify to the condition of the house which is totally uh, 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 made well within 60 days as far as the roof and the outside. Uh, this is a total remodel now because uh, I was challenged by Mr. Ramirez to the inside, obviously to the rafters with the rain, it did damage to the uh, chair rack, because the chair rack now uh, I have to replace, so I got it all the chair rack and it's ready to be uh, replaced. I did show the documentation of the certified letter so to the commission, if it says that they gave me notice, they did not give me notice. And that within 10 days, I do have certified giving information to them as far as that is concerned. And this letter states, uh, the letter is this that I sent certified, which says, this is a letter in response to your letter addressing the repairs needed to our home. My family and I would like to respectfully inform you that we intend taking and had already taken action to repair our home and has made a reasonable progress in completing our home repairs considering our family situation. Uh, it's also important to point out that this is our home and there is nothing more than my family and I uh, would want than to complete the repairs and live in our home. However, due to the circumstances beyond our control, uh, my wife and I are prim primary caregivers of our five children and with the have special needs and have disabilities. We have a uh, under, uh, we are in the fixed income and funds are uh, made, uh, made the, uh, even though we want and make the necessary improvements are very limited. Also the above is being said, not as an excuse, as I explained, it's only to explain the situation to accommodate the needs. And then I put the plan of it, uh, action, I put the uh, re-roofing permit, I put the electrical <laughs> permit, I put uh, the special collections where we have done work. So. As of April is the first time that legally I have gotten notice that the city had any problem with my home. And I responded Mr. within 10 days that you had. Mr. Rios, I'm, I'm sorry, but the, okay. the law really, when you heard the beat, that's five minutes. And right. So I, you, you got, we have all the information in front of us that you're going over. Right. So we'll take that into consideration. And uh, uh, again, the legal matter as far as uh, 
a rescheduling so that uh, we can uh, have it. And well, we'll take, we'll take this is just this is just a public hearing. Okay. We'll have an opportunity to talk about this later on in the agenda about what we're going to do. I will say this: we got four condemnations today. And I drove by and looked at all four of them. Your house it has to be the work. So I'm sorry, but I That's we'll 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 address your the issues that you've raised. Uh, yeah, when we have, when we open up the hearing, okay? Right. And right. I, like I said, I, I, just for the record, all the information packages is available to uh, to be publicly noted as far as all the notices. Okay. Uh, and when he stated that he sent me notice last year, that is incorrect. Nobody has sent me no notice last year. April was the first notice that I got, and I responded within the the time that it's allowed. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak at this public hearing about this particular house? Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and close this public hearing. It's at 610. And we'll go on to the next hearing. And I'm opening this hearing at 610. It's a hearing regarding condemnation proceedings for structure <laughs> located at 1221 East Wee Sands here in Kingsville. Robert, just give us a brief, just briefly. Pretty brief. Uh, this is uh, the same situation. We uh, we sent the notices last June, uh, June 2012. Uh, the house is uh, in disrepair. As shown in the picture. Good question. All right. Uh, this is a public hearing. It's an opportunity for anybody that wants to get up and talk about this house. You can come up here. You have five minutes. And that's set by law, not by me. That you have five minutes to talk about this particular house. Anybody else have anything on the commission on this one? Okay. I'm going to close this public hearing. We go to the next. It's <coughs> 6 12. And now open the next public hearing at 6 12. This is a regarding condemnation proceedings for structures located at 422 South 18th Street here in Kingsville. This is, uh, these are all. From uh, from June of last year, notices of violations from June of last year. This house is uh, addressed uh, 420. Uh, legally, it's uh, 422. Okay. Any questions from the commission? This, uh, the next one is why it's 420 and 422. Well, I, I, uh, I the the house looks to have an extra apartment to the rear, so it could be. There could be, I see 420 on one. It could be that one is 420, the other is 422, and it's not signed. It's one lot with with a with a setback of the house connected to it. That's the only explanation I can give. I think it'll be about 422. And usually, uh, your odds are on one side, your even numbers on the other side. But these are two. These are both even numbers. Even so numbers, so there's no one half or anything like that. I didn't see a one half on there. Yeah. Kind of through that. Thank you. And this is a public hearing. If anybody wants to come up and speak about this house, you have five minutes to do so. Just come up and tell us who you are and where you live. It's 18th Street. Yes, 422 South 18th. Do you have anything to say? No. Let's go to the Okay. My apologies, but no, I'm, I'm sorry. completely okay. in the dark here. I'm familiar with everything. Well, you just tell, have, tell us who you are and where you live, and you got five minutes to talk. Yeah. I am Louise Barker. I have power of attorney for the property owner. Uh, legally, live? the address is 420 and a half, according to the post office. City Hall says 422. Y'all wipe it out. This is a duplex, 420-422, and there have been all sorts of problems with people in the town, as far as vandalism goes, that if you've inspected the property on 420, you notice there's a key stuck in the doorknob. Because somebody tried to get the lock and pour it up and the people come out. I mean, hey, I thought this out at 3 o'clock in the morning. 
No, I wasn't that part of it. I did hear a friend call. Yes. Something needs to be done. Mrs. Johnson does not want to put more money into it. So we need to progress agreeably. And like I said, I'm new to all of this. I have just taken over. And I'm learning. First notice I had was well, the notice of this hearing. So I where, did you I, where did you tell me you live? So we get it on the record. One six zero two East Wesatch. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank Anybody you. Anybody else want to speak about this particular house? Okay, I'm going to close this public hearing at 615. We're we'll going to the next public hearing and open it at 615. This is a hearing regarding condemnation proceedings for structure located at 1702 East Fordyce. This was also part of the, the June condemnation uh, uh, notice of violation. Uh, this is a concrete combination, unsecured uh, garage. Uh, the uh, the all of these were mailed to uh, the, the PO box that we have. Okay. Any questions? All right. Well, you did y'all did a really good job of packaging this for us. I mean, we have all we have all that information really relevant on all these houses and the pictures and you know pictures. They, they speak volumes. Okay, thank you. Yes, All right. If you want to talk about this house, all you got to do is come up here and tell us who you are and <laughs> where you live. And, and you can talk about this house for five minutes. Well, Louise Barker, L O U I S E, B A R K E R, 1602 East Wesake Avenue. Once again, the garage is secure. The back door needs to be replaced, but you cannot go further than that room without breaking the next back door to get into the garage. The house needs painting, new garage door, and once again, I'm a newbie. I don't, I'm learning. So, we're going to be painting, cut, there's brush that needs to be cut down so it can be painted. That's pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to close, unless anybody has anything on this, anybody on the commission? I'm going to close this uh, public hearing at 618. We'll go on to reports from commission and staff. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a couple things. One, uh, we have a couple presentations tonight. Uh, Bob Trescott is going to make a presentation on uh, the Petrovella Kennedy uh, House and uh, give uh, the city commission some information it might want to consider. There's no decision expected of the commission tonight. It's just informational. And then uh, I think Jonathan Plant is here from, okay, Tom, thank you, uh, to give a, some information, uh, an annual report, actually, on the Connor Museum and its efforts to uh, promote tourism and things there. So appreciate him being here. The commission could take either one, you know, whichever order it prefers. Um, what, if you don't have any objections, why don't we take this after our consent Okay, okay. Uh, just a couple more things, Mayor. One is um, the, the city staff has a professional development uh, course uh, this Thursday, all day. It's a continuing effort to expose our leadership team to um, concepts that can improve city government. And then um, one, the city commission to know that Budget preparations are underway. The city staff has given me their budget, so the ball's kind of in my court. And uh, that's where we are. I guess it will only be a few weeks before we have our first budget workshops, and the commission will be presented with more detailed information by the department directors. Okay. Any questions or comments? 
Uh, anything recording everything? Uh, just to <clears throat> let everybody know, because I don't know a lot of people think we have meetings every other week. Actually, it's the second and fourth Monday of the month. And the way the calendar falls, our next regularly scheduled meeting, unless a special meeting uh, ends up being called, won't be for three weeks. It'll be on August the 12th. Um, and so staff needs to have their uh, agenda items in by that Friday. I think it's like around August the 2nd. And as the city manager mentioned, we'll be out um, at the professional development day on this Thursday. That was all. Uh, anything for the commission? All right. Um, let's go on to uh, public comments on the agenda. This opportunity for anybody to come up and tell us anything they want to talk about in on or off the agenda. And I will say this: if it's negative, it's okay too. It's positive, that's even better. This is a free microphone. This is a democratic uh, mission and country, and you can say what you want. It's your opportunity. Watch your language, though. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, uh, Mayor Fugate and City Commission. My name is Albert Garcia. I reside at 315 South 23rd Street. I'm here to uh, talk or discuss about uh, agenda item number one to approve the final passage of the ordinance amending the city ordinance by granting special use permit 1601 South Highway 77 Street P. I'm not going to read all of it, but it's basically to uh, approve uh, Silver Spur uh, Bar and Grill. I'd like to uh, just say that uh, I have to commend Mr. Leo Garcia for the business that he has run for the last 10, 15 years that he's been in Kingsville. He's a responsible citizen. Um, and I would like to see his business continue to grow. Um, more so, I'd like to say that it's also a matter of economic development as a real estate broker uh, working in this community. Uh, there's always a need for us to grow local businesses instead of people going outside of the community. <clears throat> and as everybody knows, the um, Wild Horse Mall partially sits vacant. Uh, it's a great opportunity for uh, Silver Spur Bar and Grill to occupy, you know, possibly even be a, uh, an anchor tenant if you're part of the retail business. And so maybe we can attract more businesses to come into the Wild Horse Mall so we wouldn't have all those dollars leading to Corpus Christi. Something that many people, and I myself, and Benji are doing. So, um, for those two reasons, I'd like to uh, ask the City Commission to uh, vote in favor of this. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. <coughs> Let's go on to it. Leo. I'm Garcia, 1532 Blue Street. Um, again, I just want to talk about the same issue as far as passing the service for and getting relocated. And I had a petition signed by uh, a few hundred people I wanted to leave with you guys a few months ago. And I just wanted to thank everybody who came out here to support us again today. Um, by show of hands, everybody that's out here for us to uh, give an idea of what we're carrying up there. Again, thank you very much. All right. Anybody else? Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the City Council. My name is Joseph Biedron. That's uh, B as in boy, I-E, D as in David, R-O-N. I reside at 2024 Sherwood Street here in Kingsville. I've been a proud resident here of Kingsville for the past five years. And as our previous two speakers just uh, before me had mentioned, the Wild Horse uh, Mall, this would be a great uh, addition to economic development here in the Kingsville area. Uh, at my age, uh, I'm not looking at myself as a, an individual, but I'm looking at people in the Kingsville area that fall in the ages of mid 20s, 30s, 40s, and where do they go? Where do they go here in Kingsville? There isn't. All that business is going to Corpus Christi, San Antonio, and other communities. 
so I speak very uh, much in favor of uh, the Silver Spur relocating uh, to the Wild Horse uh, Mall and what it can bring and other businesses to what I look at is a pretty uh, uh, a mall that has good stable businesses right now but many openings left for uh, future tenants. So uh, we all commend you on what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, we're going to close the public comments. We'll go on to our consent agenda. Is there a motion? Mayor, I make a motion that we accept the consent agenda as presented. Okay. Okay. Second. Okay. Uh, good. There's a motion by Commissioner Pankles to approve the consent agenda as presented, seconded by Commissioner Luber. Roll call vote. Commissioner Luber? Yes. Commissioner Pankles? Yes. Commissioner Pena? Yes. Commissioner Garcia? Yes. Mayor Piguet? Yes. Okay. <laughs> 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 Texas a and Kingsville University campus. Um, oh, my, my residence, I guess, is at uh, 730 Santa Elena Drive. <coughs> um, this is my first opportunity to present our annual report. Uh, if you look on the uh, page one, it has our expenses for this fiscal year, as well as our projected uh, budget for the Next coming fiscal year, there's about a 10,000 difference uh, anticipated on operating expenses uh, next year as opposed to this year due to 20% increase in advertising experience and similar things. <coughs> on uh, page two, you'll see some of the uh, activities that we've been involved in this year. We've had six different traveling exhibits that we've presented, temporary exhibits in our Kinkler and Valley. Uh, support from the City of Kingsville supports uh, four of our vital positions. Those are the curator who develops and schedules and installs the temporary exhibits, our visitor services staff, which is two uh, personnel who assist uh, museum visitors, and our exhibit fabricator. Um, We've been involved in some uh, different uh, outreach opportunities this year. We presented, participated in the Rain Chan Festival downtown uh, in November and in the Creative Lights in December. And we hope to continue to participate in these and more uh, community events. Uh, we have promoted the community through advertising. We've installed uh, two new billboards on Texas 77, one just outside of Robstown, headed south. Uh, one on uh, Carlos Turan headed north, and uh, we're looking at continuing uh, the uh, billboards for next year and evaluating how, how well that does in uh, terms of bringing in the uh, visitors. 
Uh, we've changed our advertising strategy. We have uh, dropped some of our national publications and increased our advertising regional publications, including Texas Now, Be the Texas, both of which are uh, aimed at visitors from the coastal bend. Uh, Viva Texas also goes uh, transborder into the Matamoros region and into Mexico. Um, uh, next year, we, we plan to continue this regional advertising as well as increased advertising to uh, attract Viva Texans. Uh, we made some new improvements to the museum. We've got a new power assist door. Uh, we've got several hands on exhibits, uh, new man fossil exhibit. And uh, within the next fiscal year, we hope to add new sections on Kingsville as well as the university. Uh, other highlights for the year uh, we hosted the Tahano Summit. Uh, we hosted a uh, tour of museum professionals in affiliation with the uh, Mountain Bank Museum Association Conference in Corpus. They came and visited the museum. Uh, we hosted a tour from Helen Clayton Groves. Uh, it was the first time she had toured our museum. Uh, we hosted the Coastal Band Regional History Fair, as we have done for numerous years. Uh, we acquired the All Ridge Collection of Ben's farm equipment from a uh, family in Robstown, three generations from farming the same homestead. We uh, were very pleased with that. And we were also the first thing in the country to uh, debut a national touring exhibit, step right up the circus exhibit that just uh, closed this, uh, at the end of May here at the Museum. Zoom. Uh, have some accompanying illustrations with some of the uh, uh, photographs of some of these exhibits and projects and things we've done. <coughs> and we appreciate uh, very much the support we've gotten from the city of Kingsville. And we hope to continue to uh, continue that relationship as we cooperate to uh, benefit uh, Israel and uh, tourism in the city. Thank you. Uh, does anybody have any questions for the commission? I do. I had a couple of comments. Yes, <clears throat> Jonathan, I've gotten to know you a little bit. I just want to say what a great job you've been doing. I was in Rockport this weekend and I was given a Texas Now and told them I was from Kingsville and lady who it's a husband and wife team that worked there, and she had nothing but great things to say about you. Okay. And I also talked to some people, if they're worried about things for their families to do, mm -hmm. the Connor Museum is a great example, and your, uh, the circuit, circus. I think there was a couple of people that were a little worried about people showing up, and I understand the ones that did had the best time ever. We had a very good attendance. At the workshop, we had about 60 people and 70 of the performance. So keep doing a good job. It's, you know, we're, I'm hearing from people out at the city of Kingsville about Connor Museum, and I've been here for a long time. It's nice to hear people talking about the Connor Museum on the streets. Thank you. So. Any other questions or comments? Mayor, thank you. Sure. Uh, Mr. Plan, you, have you tried to, and I think you mentioned it actually in the comments, uh, attach your efforts to the hotel night stays so you might be attracting to Kingsville. We have. Uh, that's why we aimed, changed our focus and our advertising a little bit because we weren't getting we weren't getting visitors from the national publications. We're having much greater success with the regional tourism publications, with publications that are specifically aimed at people who are traveling as opposed to sit at home, armchair. Mm -hmm. Uh, enthusiasts uh, and our billboards. We're, we're hoping uh, to get some good results from our billboards. Okay. <coughs> I think one of the things, Commission, that we're going to try to do is all of our activities. I mean, obviously, the hotels collect this tax. They they want it spent in a way that benefits them. That's the purpose uh, that it was established. And I think we want to make sure that we're optimizing that. And uh, we've had we have had a long, I think. In, favorable relationship with Connor Museum. But we want to make sure that that it's it's uh, it's contributing in a way that the tax was originally established for. And so we'll appreciate your assistance that way. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. We have one other presentation. Bob? I don't know what order you want to do this, and we have a short video presentation.
that we can share with your, uh, with your uh, choice. Um, we've, um, Bob, can you give a little background information before we show that? Okay. Um, I've, I've included information on the Petrovella Kennedy House in the last three or four uh, staff reports. Um, I have to admit to you all, this isn't something we actually initiated. This is one of those opportunities that comes along. Um, we learned of the, the, the possibility of uh, relocation of the, of the Kennedy House um, through people we were working with on the canopy or the pavilion across the street. And I think the mayor actually learned of it separately. Um, I'll be honest with you, our first reaction was, what a, what, a, what a wonderful house, and we thought it probably should be somewhere else. And that was our first reaction. And I, uh, I think the mayor made calls, and I made calls, to see whether this house should be in Kennedy County or some other location. But then I found out that I didn't know my history. Um, this house was actually built in about uh, the late 1860s in what is now Clayburgh County. And the Kennedys lived in Clayburgh County for 10 years, or what became Clayburgh County, and 10 years on land that's now the King Ranch. Um, turns out that, that Mrs. Kennedy uh, never actually spent the night in Kennedy County at the, at the Kennedy Ranch. I didn't know that. I didn't actually assume that they, they lived down there. So this house actually has very strong connections to our community. Um, and as I say, our first reaction was to say, what a wonderful house, someone should preserve it. Um, we looked around and we thought, well, if we did, if that house did end up here, how would we use it? And as you know, there's plans for doing more with the downtown park, um, beginning with the Zero Skate Park and now with the pavilion that we got from ATV and, and uh, the pump house and other things, really trying to take the downtown property between 5th and 6th Street and along the railroad and having it become a, a city downtown park. We don't have a plaza like a lot of cities would have, and so it's really starting to be used for some of our festivals and events as the place to have downtown events. So we thought, well, if we had to, if we had a house, it could be a place that would support using the rest of the park, plus the historical significance of the house itself. So that was just a thought. And then out of the blue, the foundation that controls the house offered it to the city with money to accomplish the move. So all of a sudden, it, it took our interest in it as a historic house and, and raised it to a level of maybe we can really do something with this, and it certainly has the historical appropriateness. So this thing has kind of acquired a life of its own. We just a couple days ago, and I think you've gotten copies of the letter from the foundation that controls the house, offering the city the, and it actually came too late to even put on the agenda for this. That's why I'm speaking on the uh, report section. It came too late to, to put on this uh, meeting, but they're now offering us the house with a sum of uh, $75,000 to accomplish the move. So to me, and, and, and with our office that deals with tourism and historic preservation and heritage tourism and, and downtown, we think it's quite an opportunity, but we thought we'd better bring you all up to date. Um, you know, there's, there's always information and misinformation that floats around. So the purpose of tonight was to bring you up to date on what we know about it and, uh, and uh, just share with you so you all can make a decision when it comes up to be a decision is ready to be made. What's your video look like? That sounds like a sounds like you. Mm -hmm. so, so. Anybody got any questions? Okay. Um, thanks, Bob. Any, uh, okay, well, let's go to the next item, our regular agenda, I guess. First item is considered condemnation of the located at 528 South 18th Street, Kingsville. Come on up, man. I, uh, you know, <coughs> this was the worst of the bunch. If you didn't get noticed, though, it wouldn't hurt to reset it for another month. Well, he misspelled the name. He misspelled the name, and so you know, maybe this out because it's council's council. Maybe we ought to just unless somebody has an objection. 
I don't have an objection, but I'd like to sure. know something that I was looking on here on the rebrief permit. This form was uh, issued 7-3-2012. It expired 12-30-2012. The electric remodel permit was issued 7-30-2012. And it expired January 26, 2013. That's what I have in my hand. So, is electric still working? I can't. But it have a roof on it. But, I mean, you got, a roof, you got a permit here and you still have no roof. And you're still looking at electricity. So, uh, Commission, we, we do have the building inspector here tonight if you'd like him to comment. He's probably more familiar with it. Well, I, I would there. say this falls on the owner. They got the permit, and it would be their responsibility to do the work. Right? Yes, sir. And there's no room. Hold up, Daniel. Excuse me for a second. Daniel, would you, but, uh, uh, Daniel, but, uh, would you, would you come to the microphone? Oh, sorry. Thanks, guys. Uh, Thanks, Daniel. Uh, I'm doing the room because work Normally, when any uh, contractor comes over here and gets a permit for upgrading a meter service, we do that immediately. We run, we don't walk. So that one was inspected. Somewhere or another, we would have to have a record of what's inspected. Now, if they didn't do any more to the house, you know, we don't have no control on that. But I noticed that service still just brand new like it was a year ago. Okay. Yeah, so I think saying, that's my uh, point, Daniel. Is you got a permit here, you did your due diligence. I've been doing some June April, but uh, I know all these contractors here have been working with them five years, two months exactly. And when they, like I said, when they get a permit, we run for electrical, gas, or whatever it is. We inspect it that same day. As soon as they call, it's ready. So I know it's been inspected. Okay. Well, here's one of those. Cases where well, Courtney's point as well is a good Oh, point. yeah, well, I mean, we're, that's what we're going to do. You know, yeah. we can put it off. We should be getting, getting the notice yeah. right, but yeah. it's going to be one of those deals where you can put this off three, yeah. four, five months, six months, a year, two years, and the neighbors are still going to have to deal with this house. And it, quite frankly, it sticks out and it's really in bad shape. I mean, there's one picture where you can see the shadow. Of the sun inside the, I mean, just there's no roof at all. So, I don't know. If, if we give them the 30 days, they y'all are y'all are again, we're doing our due diligence whether they're doing anything or not. They have to do something, they got 30 days to do something and not just sit on it. And this is my old neighborhood, and those houses used to be really nice duplexes, and they have looked like this for years, and it's an embarrassment. No, you don't even want to go down that street. And it's right there next to Harvey School, too, right there. which is another issue that I have. I mean, it's right there. Unsecured. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Go ahead, yeah. I'm sorry. Normally, when you, when you rewire a home, and then the, an inspection is passed. Normally, the roof is weathered in. I mean, the house is weathered in. You would think. You would think. Now, at the time, I mean, like Mr. Rios was saying, he said he, he was doing something to it. So it might have been in 2012. It might have been connected and had a roof. Because I don't know what happened between 2012 and then. But that would make sense to me that if we went out there and inspected, I think the roof was on it. I think the roof was on it. It just wasn't in good shape. And, and when the building official. Yeah. So I connected with the ones there. Okay. All right. Well, let's go ahead and we'll reschedule this for uh, September, August, or September. Okay, Mr. Rios, you get a reprieve because we didn't spell your name right. <laughs> uh, Mayor, uh, just in all fairness, I know Mr. Rios very well, and I know his family. My children. I think I got a picture on there. Uh, I do have a contractor, I've got two, two uh, general contractors. Promise the uh, I personally was going to do the work, but it's uh, under the circumstances. Uh, Osborne Construction has taken it on. Uh, within a week or so, he can put the roof. Uh, the siding can be 
as a, uh, we do have a plan in the package that clearly states what uh, needs to be done. Uh, I do, a, 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 I mean, please, if, if the uh, inspection number, like I said, it has a tag, you know, my fault, uh, again, I'm not an expert on, you know, when I did, when I got here, there was only one inspector. I went there and said, we'll get to it. When we get to it now, I'm, I'm, Sir, I think yeah. our point is, we hear all this stuff mm -hmm. and we hear it from people constantly. Mm -hmm. We need action. You need yes. to make it, you need to be a good neighbor, you need to fix the house to where you guys can live in it comfortably yes. and safely and just yes. get it done. Yes, uh, I mean, by the next week here, and, uh, week here, and I mean, if we're permitted to uh, do the roof and the, the siding, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a big difference. Uh, right now, uh, uh, we need to uh, move on it. I mean, we're, we we got it the house inside. I mean, preparing it for everything uh, in like 10 days. So, you know, we have an expert on, on, uh, on putting the... Uh, Floating and whatever he does, that he can do it quite quickly. You know, he already talked to Mr. Ramirez. I think he already informed him of uh, what needs to be done. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I just don't communicate. You know, I don't know the language. You know, I'm, I'm not a contractor per se. I have working knowledge. I've done the roof before, so I can do the roof. I know how to do it. I just don't know the ins and outs of inspections and permits and what or not. You know, I I yield to you know a general contract that has more experience to that. By the time if you're saying August or uh, September, by that time the house is done. You know, that's that's yeah, all I'm saying. Can I work with Mr. Ramirez? Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, I'm staying out of it. Uh, Mr. Osborne, Jack Osborne, is the general contractor. <coughs> Uh, I, the, uh, if we can get the permit, as a matter of fact, we were on call, but we, we couldn't do anything until we got to this hearing. Okay. So if we get permission to continue the work that we need to do, we more than uh, uh, will continue to do so. Okay, thank you. Mayor, uh, one thing you question, uh, does he have a current permit? Does he have a current permit? No, that's what I was going to Could comment. Uh, come on in and, and uh, we can talk about okay, the permits great, great. tomorrow. I'd love to talk to you guys tomorrow. Uh, okay. I'll be in touch with Mr. Ramirez. Okay. So Mr. Ramirez is in the front of the permits. And I'll okay. come downstairs and we'll talk. Thank you so Thank much. You. All right. Next item is considered condemnation of structures located at 1221 East We Sat here in Kingsville. Yes. We didn't get anybody that got up and complained about this one. Okay. Who's going to do it? Yeah. Uh, I make a motion that finding not able to repair the building the structure is unsafe. The present condition is a violation of ordinance and cannot be corrected with such substantial reconstruction. Then declare the building or structure to be a public nuisance and order its demolition by owner, agent, person in charge within 30 days. The city shall update. In any manner he deems necessary and proper. Second. A question made uh, by Commissioner Peckless to condemn this structure, seconded by Commissioner Luber. Any other discussion? Roll call vote. Commissioner Pena? Yes. Commissioner Garcia? Yes. Commissioner Luber? Yes. Commissioner Peckless? Yes. Mayor Pena? Yes. Okay, the next item is consider a condemnation structure located at 422 South 18th Street in Kingsville. What struck me about the comments that were made that that's very disconcerting is that, that the owner is not going to put any more money into this structure. And I think that 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 makes that makes it hard. Because it had you gotta you gotta put money in it to get it back where it needs to be. And so I, I mean I don't think that correct. Is that that's what Mr. Parker said? said? Yeah, she said she didn't want to put in it. That's correct, John. I don't want to put any more money into this house, do you? It has been one constant headache for the past 20 years. People breaking in. Just. So the answer is no. There's a space on 420 and a half okay, where want, somebody actually stole. No. The siding of the house, uh, and that's not the first time it's happened. I, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, ma'am, but I'm just trying to. I just remember your 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 uh, response was that 
Y'all don't want, you're not going to put any more money into this house. Is that correct? Yes. We feel that we would be better to have it taken okay. down okay. and then in the future rebuild. All right, well, stand, stand, stand back. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> I'm staying. Are you ready? Yeah. Uh, I make a motion finding not able to repair. Building or structure is unsafe in present condition. It's a violation of ordinance and cannot be corrected without substantial reconstruction. Then declare the building or structure to be a public nuisance and auto its demolition by owner, agent, person in charge within 30 days. The city shall obey in the manner it deems necessary and proper. Second. A motion made by Commissioner Peckless to condemn this structure. Seconded by Commissioner Luber. Any other discussion? Yes. yes ma'am. Uh, to identify the property. It's four. Is it four twenty-two or four twenty? According that, to the tax right? rules, it's four twenty-two according to the tax, tax rules. rules. Okay. And appraisal. They completed okay. duplex. Okay. I'm sorry, ma'am. You're. Yeah. Uh, any other discussion among the commission? Roll call vote. Commissioner Garcia? Yes. Commissioner Luber? Yes. Commissioner Beckles? Yes. Commissioner Pena? Yes. Mayor Pugin? Yes. Next item is to consider condemnation of structure located at 1702 <coughs> East Fordyce here in Kingsville. Now this one, uh, you know, I, 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 we disagree about the, the, the security of the garage. Granted, it, the garage door is closed. All I meant to say was the, the, the there's a broken window on, on one of the of one of the garage doors, and I was just saying that that might be a way for you know garments and stuff to get in. And that could be, that's what I meant by that. What kind of shapes the roof on that? That's awesome. it's, a, it's a decent shape. It, it's got all of the shingles on it. We we actually had a discussion asking whether or not it was uh, when when it was roofed. It's it's old, but I'm not saying it's. It's torn off or anything like that. that. This is the best of the four. Yes. It's got a brick uh, parapet wall at the bottom, and then. But it looks abandoned. Yes. Slab foundation. Slab foundation. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Tell me what you think. <laughs> well, the house is crying because of neglect. And it's three lights that are and out. That's why I'm crying. Uh, why. That's why I'm crying. <laughs> I can understand I'm that. I'm because we have to do this every meeting. Have to come up here and talk to them about taking care of their own property. Right. I agree. And my poor mother has heard this for 20 years now <laughs> from me. <laughs> but I have just recently taken over. And I'm trying very hard not to walk on her pocketbook. I'm trying very hard not to walk on her feelings. The house has got to have a new garage door. She said she was going to do it three years ago. She's 91. <laughs> three years isn't, I mean, uh, tomorrow isn't here yet. Bob, did y'all get in the house and look inside of this? Did you get in the house on the wall? Does, you don't have the pictures? Inside. Oh, inside. inside. There, there, there's, there's in, in, in there should be inside pictures on that. Bathroom, doors, bathroom. I thought I had pictures from several of them. Okay. Kitchen is floors are bad. No, floors, but that's thirty dollars a box. Wait a second. That's an eighteenth street. And the bathroom floor on four dice is ceramic tile. Does anyone do it? No. No. Are you going to get, you going to put any money on the inside? Or are you going to, do you want to clean it up and fix the inside? Oh, yes. When? Step by step. Okay, but that doesn't answer my question. When is step by step? We need a timeline. We need 20 days, 30 days. <laughs> Well, 30 days, I'm going to be busy emptying out 18th Street and getting it down. A what? <laughs> <laughs> emptying out 18th Street and getting it down. I'm going to have to get together with this gentleman on that. Yeah, well, so, I'll tell you what I think. I don't want to imagine what your priority is going to be this house, maybe. Maybe. Okay. What do you think, Bob? Well, Need to have some dialogue with with uh, the family 
to find out if they're going to have a, if they're going to do any abatement, or if they're going to clean it up. How did you get in the house, Dave? The back door, sir. Back door's open. Wide open. He just got a 55 gallon trash can, and the door was open, so we just went inside over all the, all the debris. Was the, gra the garage door, I mean, from that back room to the garage, was locked. Not when we went over there. Um, many of my other inspectors were with me, so we didn't. We didn't break our doors. We don't do that, man. I, I know that. But it was open. I know you would not do that. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, but, Commission, if I could, um, estimates are that we have over 400 houses or structures that need to come down in Kingsport. And um, most of the houses that come before the City Commission have been in disrepair for decades and there have been plenty of opportunities and chances to fix up these houses it's only been, it's only been because staff has forced the issue that the commit that, that the owners have come forward yeah you know, and you i don't know if you realize this how much work our staff has to do to bring these houses to us and they do a great job but it's it's hard work on their part and I like I like to support them. I, I can also, understand if I could, that. Mayor, if I could also say that, that these houses come to your attention not necessarily because the staff has gone out and searched them out. It's because we've received a complaint from either a school or a property owner or somebody. That's that's normally how it comes to our attention. So it's not like staff is going out and victimizing people. We've responded to complaints. Yeah, and, and there are some. There are some where we go out and we we've identified them as being dangerous structures. So, uh, you know, I guess it's important to understand that that in, in in deciding these issues, we're responding in part not just to staff's concerns, but the concerns of neighboring property owners. Well, sure. And and this, are, you know, <clears throat> this particular house and the one on we set both. Uh, those are not, those neighborhoods are, are, are still pretty nice, real nice. And these, these houses really stick out. Mm -hmm. it's a, so we can't give you another 60 days or six months or is what we're saying, I think. Okay. So you need to decide whether you can get it fixed quickly or not at all. It has to be quickly. <laughs> 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 I, I would say that you know the chief does with the staff and come out with the plan and and if it's something feasible and that, that they can do it, then let them do it. If not, they bring it back to to us. Okay. Let's put both of these houses on our first first of September. I'm sorry, it's noisy. No, I'm not talking, looking at you about your <laughs> bag. I'm talking about your house. <laughs> hey, I just took over. <laughs> well, you got until September. <laughs> Daniel can work with you, and I'll tell you what, it's up to him whether he wants to or not. Okay. Hey, just one, um, sure. just one comment. We drove by, uh, uh, Jennifer, we drove by. Uh, community parent supervisor. Uh, we did go by the houses today, and this particular um, structure has uh, it's you can't really see it with the huge overgrown tree. Yeah, the trees are running together the wall. Uh -huh. And they have to come down in order for it to be like painted, and I do apologize for interrupting you. Yeah, that was just a concern. I know that we. Uh, Mr. Saucy, and when we do discuss that with her, that's that's a uh, part of the issue that was brought up to us in a complaint that came up. Uh, you know, with the being so hot, bees um, were an issue, uh, mosquitoes, and all that that comes with overgrowth and uh, rank vegetation. On that. Okay. Thank you. Thank all of you. Welcome. Let's go to the next item. Consider accepting the comprehensive annual financial report of the city of Kingsville for fiscal year 2011 2012. 
Luke, how are you? Very good. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Commissioner, so what I'd like to do is recognize two accounting uh, finance office uh, staff members. One is James Bryson, who's our accounting manager, and then Stacy Pena is also in our office. If y'all would stand, please, just for a minute. And these are part of the team that puts together the CAFR for you. Stacy came to us. And she's been here almost a month, and uh, James came about a year ago. And James had eight years' experience with the city of Corpus, and Stacy uh, had some experience and came over, and she's passed a couple parts of her CPA, and she's, she's been an addition to our office staff. But uh, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Luke Walmack to walk us through the office. Thank you all for giving me the opportunity to present the audit to you. Um, if you'll turn to page 38 and 39, we'll go over the financials of the district, I'm going to start the district, the city. And um, first of all, I want to explain, as we've talked about in the past, that there's two sets of financials here. One is a full set of accrual financials, and one is a uh, modified accrual, which is cash basis, basically. And that's the one we're going to go over. Um, that's on page 38 and 39. On, you'll see about four or five funds there. You have the general fund, police forfeiture fund, debt service, capital improvements, and then all the special revenue funds are grouped. The general fund has about $6.2 million. The uh, taxes receivable and various other receivable about $1.2 million. We have, we have restricted cash, which is just under $3.7 million. And that $3.7 million is your landfill closure, pre and post closure uh, reserves that y'all said were over the years. For a total of assets of $13,446,000. We have liabilities of $2,712,000. Last year, those liabilities were 3.1, and so the liabilities are down, primarily due to accounts payable. And then the next thing, the next big number down, is the total equity is $10,734,000, and last year that equity was $10,418,000. So the city and the general fund is in very good shape. That 5.6 million is about a million six over what you would normally carry as a reserve, uh, three months. So you, you, you've got very adequate reserves in the general fund. Police forfeiture fund is still very uh, adequate. It has total assets of 5 million one, of which 3.4 million is cash. And it has an equity of 1.681 million. Um, available for future expenditures. The debt service has $1,057,000 in assets, including the um, taxes receivable. And they had a liability of $400,000, leaving them with a $733,000 fund balance. The debt service is, has a substantial fund balance itself. Capital improvements uh, have total assets of $3.7 million. Last year that was $5 million. Uh, that's decreased about a million and a half, and that's what you expect because that's the bond money you borrowed and you put there, and you're going to be spending it down. That's just going to come down to zero, leaving at, at that point in time three million sixty-six thousand dollars. So the the city is in very good financial condition. Uh, all your funds are in very good shape, and so if you then now turn to the fund on pages forty-one and forty-two, we'll look at the revenues and expenditures. Total revenue is one million, I mean, uh, fifteen million one oh six. That's far left-hand column under general fund. Last year, that was fifteen million one ninety. So revenue is still holding strong, uh, pretty consistent. Expenditures were fifteen million five fifty-two versus fourteen million. They were up about a million due to expenditures that y'all planned in budget uh, for capital improvements throughout the city. And then we had uh, net change in fund balance was actually a positive $3,000,000 uh, 
on one five. So uh, even with some pretty aggressive spending in order to enhance things around the city of Kingsville, you still end up with about three hundred fifteen thousand dollars surplus. When you add that to that ten million four eighteen, that brings you down to the number we just saw a minute ago, which is ten million seven thirty four. So the equity in the city is still very strong. The police department forfeiture fund brought in eight hundred seventy one thousand dollars. They spent one point five six one million. And therefore, they had a reserve of two million, and that brought that down to a million six eight one. So they still have a substantial reserve as of the end of the year. Debt service brought in fourteen a million four fifty four. It spent a million eight oh two. However, we have a transfer in uh, from one of the other capital projects funds of four hundred twenty seven thousand, resulting in a positive uh, variance there of seventy nine thousand uh, dollars to the better. And when you add that to the $654,000 that was already existing, that brings you down to a fund balance of $733,000. Uh, capital improvements, uh, very little money coming in off of interest nowadays, so your income is only around $20,000 of interest if you're in on the bonds, uh, bond proceeds. However, we spent $1.4 million, and there's that $1.4 million for depletion, and that brings the $4.3 million equity down to the $3,066,000. million. So uh, revenues remain strong. Your reserve, uh, four months of expenditures would be roughly four million, like we talked about a minute ago. So the general fund is in very good financial condition. A police forfeiture fund is still heavily capitalized. Uh, debt service fund, uh, $733,000 is more than adequate to uh, sustain that. And the capital improvements are depleting as you, as you do based on your budget deal. And so the financial condition of the, of the city is in excellent shape. We did have our audit committee meeting uh, this afternoon. We went over the findings. Uh, primarily, there was one repetitive finding where we were talking about condition of the counting records. A lot of good work goes on, but it's still some of the, the assets and liabilities need reconciliation for prior to the end of the year. And uh, we, had, we talked about the investment policy, uh, hours that need to be obtained. That was one of the other findings. And um, so it was just some general matters, but we had a pretty good discussion, pretty good dialogue, and I think management will continue to uh, address those issues. And so uh, this is a, I don't know how many hours going to this, <laughs> but it's a lot. I think it's almost two months. Um, I, I got my own parking place and everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got my office. Yeah, I got my mayor's office. I signed a lot of bills while I was up there. I was just not going to come to effect or not. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, I, I got to thank Vince and all his staff and Mark and his people for all the aid and assistance they gave us in preparing these financials for you. And so I would tell you as of that date, September 30th, 2012, the city is in very good financial condition. Good deal. Any questions or comments? Yeah, sounds good. Thank you all Thank you so much, Rick. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, let's go to the next item. Center of resolution authorizing the mayor to enter to a first amendment to the interlocal cooperation agreement between the city of Kingsville, Texas A&M University. Is that actually considered accepted? Oh, it is. Yeah. So, okay. Oh, okay. That's what I got you for. <laughs> Among other things. Come to me with all other good stuff to do. Uh, who made a motion on that? I did. Second. Okay, motion by Commissioner Luber to accept the comprehensive annual financial report seconded by Commissioner Pecos. Any other discussion? Roll call vote. Commissioner Pecos? Yes. Commissioner Banyan? Yes. Commissioner Garcia? Yes. Commissioner Luber? Yes. Mayor Pecos? Yes. Next item is consider a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter to the first amendment to the interlocal cooperation agreement between the city and Texas A&M University Kingsville relating to engineering design work for Piper County from Piper County Courthouse to Third Street. Mayor, City Commission, Charlie Carpenter, City Engineer, and Director of Public Works. Uh, this is a resolution item for the First Amendment uh, for uh, the uh, interlocal agreement between the City of Kingsville and Texas A&M University Kingsville uh, Engineering Department. For doing the uh, the design work on the cover down. I have to uh, I have to say, and Dr. Nix with the uh, the Dean of Engineering is, is here uh, with us tonight. And I have to uh, 
uh, say that the uh, engineering department at A&M Kingsville and the students have been doing an outstanding job on the design work for the Clearburg Avenue project, which is from the Clearburg County Courthouse to Third Street, where the new city hall is going to be. Uh, there, there are some, some. Uh, there were some upon review. Some review. There were some elements that we needed to upgrade, uh, pedestrian and ADA elements, uh, just to name a few. So that was the the uh, reason behind uh, maybe extending the deadline with the university for uh, this amendment, um, and that's the. The, the reason why this is there any questions? I have a couple questions. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Charlie, it says that the additional amount of six thousand dollars is going to increase the contract price to thirty-five, and it is for additional engineering design for at Sixth Street. Yes, Sixth Street has uh, some of the pedestrian elements or ADA elements. Uh, we're talking audible push buttons. Uh, better ADA ramps and things like that. So you're just going to upgrade what's there. Upgrade what's there, and we're upgrading the whole uh, the whole uh, stretch of uh, roadway, so to speak, with with so, ADA ramps and things like that. But that wasn't there. included in the original, since it went from courthouse to. Not entirely, no. It was included, but not up to uh, current ADA standards. Okay. Are we going to have Are we going to have anything else come up between now and then? Or are we covered for everything that they're looking at? We're going to be covered for everything we're looking at. Uh, I'm told this will finish the project, but <clears throat> Steve Nix is here and he can maybe speak to that. Dr. Nix, if you would like to. <laughs> he was hoping not to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get him up here. Let's get him involved. Yeah, we're looking at another <laughs> modern extension as well. I'm very interested in seeing what these guys are doing. Where are we going to get a presentation out of this? That's the next question. Oh, that is, that is a good question. Yes. What is our plan? Our plan is <laughs> which is in, in August. We're going to have a formal presentation. Uh, and and, and I, I'm, I'm, my plan was to have a tour. It's called the presentation tour. Not just to the city commission, which would be the first and foremost, but to the downtown management district as well and other uh, uh, committees that would like to see this this presentation of what the uh, the new design uh, is going to look like. Do you have any idea what it's going to cost us to do whatever we all are saying? Walmart, good, 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 good question. Uh, you know, we're, we're looking at about, uh, with the stamp concrete and, uh, and and other factors, we're looking at between 800000 and a million dollars. Okay. And that's from end to end. You're talking about an actual construction? Construction dollars. I, I think it's going to be higher. Than I mean, I, I don't want to. Construction, yeah. engineering. Uh, manager, or well, we got the engineering. Yeah. Well, thirty-five thousand dollars in engineering fees. Typically, it's it's about ten twenty percent uh, when we hire a consultant. So you're looking at about a hundred thousand to two hundred thousand in engineering fees, which with the university we got really for thirty-five thousand dollars. We're happy about that. But the other stuff is that include any of the equipment. And when you say construction? And this uh, project of this type will not be done in-house. This will be contracted out, go out for bids. So the, the plans that, that we're building is a, is a formal set of plans, signed and sealed by, by the city engineer, of course. Uh, but we're going to go out for, for contractual bids uh, for this. So as far as equipment is concerned, it's not the city's equipment that's going to be doing this, this work. Right. Now let, let me ask, if I could, for the commission. One of the things that... Uh, design firms, uh, engineering firms typically provide as an estimate of probable costs. So is that something that we're going to get from our students as an estimate of probable costs for this project, which we can then use to compare against any bids that we receive? Uh, we already did that, Steve? So, yeah, that's coming at the end of the program. Yeah, so I think it's... Some of the confusion that I'm kind of hearing might be... Just, when we were talking about this a year ago, we were talking about $3 million. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, typically 10%. That's right. really knows how to make 800,000. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. I hope Charlie's right. Uh, so, that's that's a lot anyway, of the extension that we're asking for is uh, just to be you know, brutally honest about it. You're dealing with students. You know, some things have taken a little longer. They've gone through an education process, which has been fantastic. I mean, these kids, I mean, essentially, we've got a few extra assistants in engineers. 
Um, and so it's been an education process. They're turning out a good product. So, yeah. Charlie, um, what are some of the specific improvements that we're looking at? Like I said, there are some uh, uh, ADA ramps that, that turn to current standards. And then, uh, of course, like we mentioned, the signal, the signal work, we want 6th Street to be an audible uh, signal. So when, when we talk ADA, we're not just talking about that person that's in a wheelchair. We're also talking about that person that uh, might have a, a hearing impaired Sorry. Or, or might have a vision Im impairment as well. So we have an audible push button that will chirp and uh, you'll have the countdown head that will count down for that person that's also here. Oh, we got ramps and we got 6th Street light. What else? There's, there's ramps, and not just ramps along 6th Street. We're talking ramps, I mean, not just on 6th Street at that intersection. We're talking right. ramps from, from point A to point B. Are we talking about like water sidewalks, uh, uh, different type the, parking? The, the sidewalks, there are some different kind of parking. Yes, there are some different, but that was part of the original design anyway, the, the parking scheme. Um, and so was the sidewalk. We're not really buying right of way to, to uh, do more sidewalks, but we are doing some, uh, some sidewalk improvements as well, some more aesthetics uh, on the sidewalks so as well. There's going to be some lighting. Uh, we're also, one of the new things that uh, that we're adding as part of this amendment was some conduit, fiber optic conduit from point A to point B. It's very important to have that infrastructure underneath, uh, under there, and now's the time to do it uh, for communications. And then we're also doing electrical conduit from point A to point B. We're, not, so, we're so, not widening the sidewalks? Or? Uh, not really, no. The, the, there are some portions that we are looking at that we are adding sidewalks. Uh, and that portion is closer towards uh, towards the 3rd Street area over there by the Methodist Church. Uh, those are getting the big sidewalk improvements. As far as the the, the front end, or, or what I call Zero Lot, which is downtown, really, uh, uh, clever, I mean, not clever, uh, uh, from 6th to like the HEB, uh, that's limited space. So we, we don't have room to widen uh, sidewalk there and, and hinder parking there. Uh, but most of the sidewalk improvements is, is further down by 3rd Street. There's areas that, that, that we don't have any sidewalk, uh, and we're going to add sidewalk uh, there. So over there is where, where, where a lot of the improvements are on the sidewalks. Uh, uh, thanks for uh, enlightening uh, the specifics, guy. I think the public should know. Yes, and yes. Exactly what we're going to spend a you know, million dollars on. Are, we gonna, are you going to do anything with the street? I have, some, I have some elected officials from the county that have complained about the street when they have to do a walk in a parade. It's, it's too bad. Uh, uneven. 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 It, well, the, the street is going to be redone. It's going to be redone with concrete, and we're looking at different options of concrete. Uh, Staff concrete to make it look like pavers and things like that. I like so, that. So we're looking at uh, some different options okay. on there. All right, look forward to the report. Thanks, Ken. <laughs> Resolution. It's a motion. Right? So moved. Second watching now. For <laughs> motion made by Commissioner Garcia. Second by Commissioner Luber. Uh, 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 everybody trying to get the motion here. Who <laughs> um, made the motion? Okay. Here the motion. Sure. motion made by Commissioner Pena to accept the resolution seconded by Commissioner Luber. Commissioner Garcia. I think we uh, spoke at the same time. Okay. Around the same time. Good guy. No, that's good enough. Don't worry. Any other discussion? Roll call vote. Commissioner Pena? Yes. Commissioner Garcia? Yes. Commissioner Luber? Yes. Commissioner Peckles? Yes. Mayor Pena? Yes. Next item is consider introduction of an ordinance amending the fiscal year 2012 2013 budget of the General Fund for the City of Kingsville for a first amendment to the interlocal agreement with uh, Texas A&M Kingsville, Ranger, and Gladbrook Avenue. Fair Commissioners, <clears throat> this is the introduction on budget amendment for agenda item number 11 that y'all just uh, had presented to you for the $6,000 increase. Okay. And it's just coming out of our fund, uh, fund balance that we had. Yes, sir. Or the excess fund that we had for uh, 2012. Yes, sir. Okay. Anybody have any questions about that? No, sir. That is an introduction item. So we'll go to the next item. Consider a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into a local cooperation agreement between the city of Kingsville 
Fix any keys or lay the usage of facilities and signage. Come on up, Scott. <laughs> Well, good evening, Scott Gans, uh, Vice President of Athletics and the Recreation of the University. Really, the genesis of, of this agreement uh, dates back to uh, probably about 18 months ago. Uh, we were making a, an attempt to transform Abilene Stadium, if you will, the track and the infield surface and some of the other amenities around it. As you might recall, it's a partnership agreement. Uh, there was no new monies that, that came from the institution itself or fee based revenues. Really, it's based on uh, the traffic that we generate into that stadium. So the partners are involved are a couple ISDs, uh, several different discussions with the city and support thereof, and then uh, the other events that we've expanded. For a quick example, over about 90 days last fall, hosted 29 football games in that facility alone. So this interlocal agreement is to uh, r really integrate that partnership with the city through the, through the new facilities, the signage, and the other opportunities that are there to make Kingsville destination sport or, or, destination spot with regard to uh, sport in itself and the different levels and uh, championships that we do host and continue to pursue. Tell us a bit about some of the pro uh, championships that you're, that you're going to try to pursue with, with the with not only the field but the track. Well, the most recent ones obviously uh, bringing back UIL to Kingsville. We, we signed late this fall a two-year agreement of UIL track and field and over a thousand participants took place third week in April. Um, it was just and, and what, what, what class is that? Is that 2A, 3A or is it? We were 1A, 3A. 1A, It was a combination, yes. A thousand kids? Yes, uh, over a thousand. From the kids. region? Yes. Most of those kids got to stay in hotel rooms? Uh, correct. <laughs> hotel rooms? Correct. Okay. A thousand of them? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, actually, our aggregate data for the fall, or, or for the fall itself, was uh, a little bit over 150. 9,000 uh, people visiting the, the stadiums uh, by our account, if you will, from that standpoint. J July 15th, here this month, uh, NCAA just released the opportunity to bid on a long litany of uh, Division II National Championships. Track and field is one of those that uh, was opened. Uh, declaration of intent to bid will take place by August 9th. Uh, one has to do that. We actually had a lengthy meeting on that this morning. Um, and then uh, the finalization of that, September 16th. The championship, national championships that are open are 2015 through 2018, so it's a four year window there. I know the city of San Angelo and Angelo State will, in fact, bid on it. But one of the expansions, the, the most costly and uh, important expansion to that city was actually the track itself and uh, positioning it to, to be able to host. Uh, events of uh, track and field events of that caliber. Um, are you going to bid on it? Yes, we're 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 we're, present, we're preparing ourselves to do that. Um, and in terms of participants in that, um, that is a large crowd because it's a national championship event. There's 377 men and women uh, individually, so you get about just under 750 uh, participants that will come to compete for national championships. It's, it's a full week long event, four days of the events itself. Uh, Wednesday evening requires a, a banquet space, if you will, of 1,200. So we're trying to address that part there. Um, the introductory meeting itself requires a space that will kind of. Will St. Angel have something like that? They do, and the Janelle Center there on campus in their arena as well as their convention center. Uh, there are other amenities that we have and that we've addressed in the stadium itself in terms of uh, having the opportunity to witness uh, our watch multiple field events. We do have, uh, through construction over the last four years, one took place this year in terms of multiple throwing event stations and multiple uh, vaulting stations from that standpoint. So there are a lot of things about the competitive track, the practice facilities, and the proximity of what we do have, regardless of its age of construction. Did, did we lose that, that agreement with the, uh, the UIL agreement with the one a did we lose it? We we did. Um, it's I'm trying to think of these. We haven't had it for probably four years. It's been a while. Longer than that? No, it it's been been, no, it's been about four years. The the, uh, the uh, head of UIL had been the had been the athletic director over at A and Corpus Christi, and uh, he uh, he just summarily, without letting any of us really know, we learned about it on the evening news. Yeah, yeah. 
They just moved it without giving us an opportunity to get or do anything to, to okay. try to keep it. Scott, uh, this money is 25000 per year for up to 10 years for a total of about $250,000. Correct. What, uh, general, what fund is it going to go to? It's actually going to go into the amortization schedule of the 10-year uh, note to pay for the... Um, so it's the athletic department? Well, towards the actual fit facility enhancements that occurred. Okay. About this time last year. How much did the field cost you? Uh, the and field itself was about 1.7, and some of the uh, external entrance items and what have you, gift shop, were uh, uh, about 600,000. That's on a separate business plan. Go ahead. Can you reveal the um, the agreements that you have with the ISDs? Can I reveal those? Well, they're, they're public knowledge. Yeah, and that's. Is that, I mean, what is that comparable to? to uh, you've got a, uh, you're half of the lowest one. The other two are 50 and 80. How much? 50 and 80. Per, per year. Per ISD. Per, per year, correct. Per how right. long? For 10 years? Uh, I believe we're on five year notes uh, with renewable aspects to that, uh, given the nature of the agreements, the EM system, and, and what we're allowed on. And they use the stadium, though, for their games and their athletic. Correct. Uh, we expanded those agreements. We've uh, progressively over the last six years. I say expanded them. Uh, expanded them into multiple sports. Um, probably most significantly, expanded them into practices, uh, practice opportunities, and you know, sub varsity middle school contests. Um, just really uh, to, to be a better partner with our city from that standpoint. Wrong, right, or indifferent. Uh, the business of sports one of the top three industries in all 50 states, so we want to play our part in doing that. One of the great benefits we have are our facilities. I mean, we can take a walk from Havelina Stadium and walk through all three stadiums in the arena and back in about 11 minutes. So the proximity of our venues and the parking that surrounds them really is, it is a point of destination, and we can continue to prove that together. Any questions? You know, I originally, uh, y'all came to me, and this one is, it's been a long time, gosh. I was going to that note paper, and it was, uh, oh, uh, Ken, Ken, Ken Oliver. Oliver. Uh -huh. And if you think about having the stadium, what venue in Kingsville puts more people in town? Not just at the best, but... But people eat in our restaurants and spend money. They're not on it. I'm telling you. Between Havilland games and uh, high school playoff games and, and track and field, it's a, there's not any, not any other event that I'm aware of that we have that, that does a better job at that. Um, so when, with that in mind, I thought, you know, this would be a good thing for tourism dollars to go into. But my... Cracker Jack lawyer here Sorry. informed me that that's against the law. And as my son, who was bailing out of jail one day, said, Dad, the law's got to be changed. <laughs> that law's got to be changed. I cannot believe that you can't use tech tourism dollars for something like this. It makes no sense to me. There's few exceptions, and we don't mean them. Oh, I know. It's a, and it actually tells you what cities are eligible. Mm -hmm. are eligible. Yeah. Just trying to keep you out of jail. <laughs> <laughs> so we can't use tourism dollars, which makes perfect sense. So we have $100,000 coming from selling these for economic development for 15 years. Well, that's what you best get? That's well, what I put down for the. Yeah, I have the hundred seven twenty five to go for this, and you can still do that for seventy five a year. Um, one hundred thousand goes for fifteen years. Right. There's a funding source. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, uh, Courtney. Um, having read the resolution. And having heard the purpose, um, do you have a comment or a legal? Well, 
the, the money is coming from a legitimate source, and in speaking uh, with Mr. Guides on the phone, he's advised that they have um, billboards in the stadium and then along um, the roadway as well. <laughs> then they would allow the city usage to scroll messages for public ser service or public health and safety issues. And they also, as you know, the city doesn't really have a lot of times adequate uh, facilities for holding meetings and uh, things like that. And they will uh, offer space to us for those as well. And $25,000 a year. Well, that's not the real purpose, is to make is to try to help encourage uh, economic development. And tourism, 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 tourism is economic development. Well, it, and and I, I'm, if, if sure. I may, I, I don't think you answered my question correctly. Okay, perhaps not, I didn't understand it. Because that's not what was said in terms of what we're looking to pay for. Because <coughs> um, basically we're talking about stadium and field, right? Well, but, that's that, that's your business engine that's, for the right, exactly. that economic development. And nowhere is that stated. And I'm looking at transparency, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, nowhere is it in the resolution. We reference. Well, we're providing them the money, and they can put it in whatever you know fund they need to put it into. So long as we receive the ability to use the meeting facilities and the signage and um, things like that, that. Mr. Gines had stated in the agreement said that they'll allow us to do so you're, you're to okay pass on with, a message. You're okay with huh, yes sir because so many times once once we give them the, the funding source as long as they allow us to do things that they're stating in the agreement that they're going to allow us to do it I mean does it really matter to us right. what pot they put the money in and what they do with it so long as we still get the benefit of the bargain with regards to the rooms and the sign issues and and, and, and continuing your questioning, that begs the point. What what brings to my mind is how many how many meetings are we going to hold on campus, and is it worth the twenty five thousand dollars for all those meetings going to be held? But as well as the usage of, of the signage, like for having a litter abatement event, or if we're having some type of other See, my, uh, my, my emergency particular, situation. My particular uh, uh, concern here is we, we need to put, we need to connect purpose and funding to make sense. And, and and to me, at this moment, $25,000 for a meeting place sounds like a big amount of money to pay. Where we could get meeting space for hardly nothing. That's, that's, I'm not against the idea, but we need to connect, we need to have a, a better connection for those two. Can you put in the resolution the fact that we believe that this is that this is beneficial to the city because it's going to create economic development and that that it's a, it adds to our tax base. I mean our tax uh, sales tax and, and uh, hotel motel tax. Because any any out, outsider coming in and reading this, I understand the question is I mean, it's, it's you, can, you can take this thing out of context. Yes. It, would, it would really look ugly. Yes. Well, it's a, it's a very simple outline. No, we, uh, as, uh, as the mayor alluded to, it's, it's been many months, uh, spanning over a year, trying many different avenues to craft the clarity of that partnership. Yeah, I understand. So uh, we don't push back or uh, belie, you know, the transparency on that. And that's when Commissioner Lubert asked uh, on the funding thereof, so that it's going to be dedicated in one of those restricted accounts yeah, uh, for that. I'm not against I that think at it's, all. It's, it's, a, it's, it's kind just of like connecting. Yeah. They're the connecting with the A with the with the B. You know what I mean? Figuring out the language yeah. that passes muster. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, we got some time. We weren't gonna. We're not gonna have any money available until October anyway. Correct. Right. So, why don't we continue this and we'll look at it before we have a chance to put some language in there because it really, truly, it does something needs to be in there because if nobody that was at this meeting. <coughs> saw this 
and with that just that resolution, it really doesn't look right. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. What the heck do you do? Conceptually strong, but uh, language is a little bit cloudy. Yeah. Mr. Burns, what, what happened to the cactus ball? What happened to the cactus ball? It went away. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be smart. Who has it? No one has it. Nobody? No one has it. So you all it's a great question, it? too. And I don't mean this in a critical sense. I came here in August of 07 as an athletic director, and we didn't have a cactus ball that year. One of the curious things to me, though, is nobody asked me for the duration of 12 months of that year the question you just did. And that's an amazing thing. Um, the Cactus Bowl uh, had been here for a uh, better part of a decade, nine years, if memory serves. Um, the biggest, uh, biggest gap there is a title sponsor. A title sponsor with regard to, okay, so this is something we want to televise. Um, that is something that kind of moves those things. It is a great event, a lovely event, particularly Tuesday night, family night. And Wednesday night at JK Northwood. It's a great event. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work for our staff and, and, and our folks on the committee, which are which are community members from that standpoint. It's one of those things that can drive economic development, and I think successfully did over time and over years, and always had a black budget, which means it always had a good mission, too. Um, and it's still open for partnership from that standpoint. But uh, you got a little bit arduous coming up with about a quarter million dollars to pull it off. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. And from, from our staffing standpoint, um, you know, we're talking about the clarity of the language. I think that's the most positive thing we can do to, to strengthen that, that affinity or that partnership. But it is a lot of work for our staff. And I don't mean that in a negative way. Uh, I remember being at the uh, Kansas Bowl with uh, my senior associate AD while we were running four high school playoff games here in the stadium in an you know, electrical storm on uh, two on Friday, two on Saturday. They do a great job with that. Um, we, we need it for our business plan. I think the city wants that or covets that partnership as well. Not any one of those events necessarily is going to be a watershed net yield for either party, but the accumulative effect of having 29, 30, 32 games over a span of about 100 days this is a pretty powerful thing. I think the committee just got worn out. They did. They did. There were just a few people that were doing the bulk of the work, and it was mm -hmm. a lot of work. Mm -hmm. People don't realize how hard that was. Correct. Just picking teams, making sure you had all the equipment, and the referees, and the hotel rooms, and feeding them, and all. It just was we a monumental task. Yeah. We're, we transport, I think we were rosters of what, uh, 56 or 60, one of the two, but you know, flying them in from around the country and what have you. But you're right, it's a powerful thing to expose people to South Texas, right. Kingsville, and uh, uh, football the way we play down here. So, but it, those type of things and partnerships are certainly, uh, <coughs> I mean, they're certainly, uh, I, on the table for me in terms of being open-minded and looking at how we can expand those things. Truly. What? So the uh, $25,000 will play a role in that? In the Cactus Bowl? No. And that's dedicated to an amortization schedule on the bill that's already uh, forged for the next decade. <laughs> Waiting to be paid. But I'm happy to come back with a case statement uh, to propose the Cactus Bowl. <laughs> Well, you know, hey, look, for four years. You know, you know, North Alabama and Florence has had that had the uh, football championship game for the last what, 25 years. Yes, Frisco, Texas is getting ready to bid on that. Uh, yeah, it's 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 not, but, then, but the city of Florence, I don't know what they put into it now, but it was 15, 20 years ago. They put hundred thousand dollars into that game. Correct. They wrote a check for hundred thousand dollars a year for that that championship game. Did they still have it? Yeah. Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, North, that game is played, North Alabama plays their home games on the campus of the high school, which is where the 2000 championship takes place. So that's a multi layer partnership. And then also have facilities division two football. But, so it's between that ISD, the, the city, uh, part of their CBB, um, and uh, North University of North Alabama. Can they improve in the state? Oh, yeah. Have they improved yeah, they, uh, yeah, progressively over time? Yeah. Yes. Locker rooms, lock uh, playing surface, synthetic, etc. So, yeah. uh, but uh, we actually have a bigger and better venue here. We really do. All right, thanks, Scott. Thank you, folks, very much. All right. Okay.
want to take a break? Well, I, I'm going to take a break. You're going to take a break. Okay. Well, we're just, we'll take that. And we're not taking the action. Yeah, we're not taking any action. We're we'll going change the language on it. Okay. The rest is ready to work. Excuse me, I appreciate that. Unless somebody has an objection, we'll do it. We'll handle it. No, we'll do it. 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 All right. Then let's go to the next item. We consider a resolution authorized the city manager to execute an interlock agreement for E911 public safety entering point services between the city and Coastal Penn Council of Governments. Well, I I hope this. Uh, Are they going to give us some money? I hope this resolution is self-explanatory because the, the police chief isn't here tonight. And I'm, oh, uh, but there uh, Julian we'll back there. We got so Julian in there. So, <laughs> any questions? I hope uh, Julian can respond to. Julian, do you want to, you want to step forward so, just in case? The police chief's not here tonight. Anyway, this basically continues an agreement we had in place. The, the e, is that a typo? No, it's not a type. Emergency 911. <laughs> so, Julian, <laughs> I guess you can respond to questions. I'll try. Yeah. <laughs> Does anybody have any comments on this? So, I think it's pretty much a question about the two year contract that comes yeah. up every year. And this will be the third time that we would be entering into the same agreement and the language changes other than the date. I make a motion that we authorize the uh, management to enter the intellectual agreement. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Lubert to accept this resolution. Second by Commissioner Sandy. Any other discussion? I'm sure Commissioner Garcia would mind if we went ahead and voted on this <laughs> since he was going like this a while ago. <laughs> yeah. We'll call vote. Commissioner Peckham? Yes. Commissioner Binion? Yes. Commissioner Lubert? Yes. Mayor Pugin? Yes. Next item is consider waiving landfill fees associated with community cleanup project for health and safety of residents performed by First United Methodist Church UM Army Corps. Right. Uh, <clears throat> Mayor, this is, you, you have what, what I have. There's, I think much of this has already occurred, perhaps all of it. Um, there was no estimate of total tonnage or anything like that. I think it goes for a good cause. Um, we are basically being requested to waive for the landfill fees associated with. Hey, Finney, you know, so that, that much. Is that a staff recommendation? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so motion made to waive this fee by the Commissioner of Texas. Is there a second? Is there a second? Second. Okay, second by Commissioner Garcia. Let's go ahead and ask the discussion. Yeah. Um, do you have any idea how much they they brought you out there? Yes, they made one call today. So far, they made it was a ten and a half uh, precinct four budget. Yeah, they're, they're not done. I don't think they said they had more. A ten and a half so far, just one of them. Yeah. So we went ahead. And I think they're business. finishing up though. They're not going to be here. They started yeah. last Monday, and I think they're through. Yeah, I, through I, tomorrow, I think maybe. Yeah, I mean. My, I think it's for a good cause. I don't think it's going to be. Well, what they were doing is they were making ramps for elderly people, and I think Commissioner Lomas helped him identify some neat people that needed it. I think they it actually redid one of somebody's house. And we can, if I'm not mistaken, I think we're accumulating the total tonnage yes. being brought so we can report that back to the commission at a later date. We just don't happen to have an, an estimate in advance of how much that might be. Well, just out of the have we done that before? Okay. Not that I'm aware of. Not since I've been here. Uh, typically, when we typically when we bring these to the city commission for like downtown festivals, we have an estimate of staff costs and the, and that type of thing. But there just wasn't a reasonable way to estimate What's how much say? tonnage they might bring to the budget. What's that cost? You're looking at twenty six seventy five per ton for a Did you say twenty six seventy five? Per ton? Per ton? $26? Yes. 75 cents per ton. Okay. Roll call vote, so it's not a whole lot of Commissioner Benyon? Yes. Commissioner Garcia? Yes. Commissioner Lubert? Yes. Commissioner Beckles? Yes. Mayor Yes. Next time we consider an introduction of an ordinance amending the City of Kingsville Code of Ordinances, Chapter 5, Article 2, the sewer providing for increase in sewer rates. 
Mary Commissioners, <coughs> these are scheduled introduced right in accordance with our model, uh, water wastewater model that uh, the city entered into uh, August uh, and September 2010. And so the model runs through uh, fiscal year 15, which is 2014-15. And these, uh, the increase in schedule for this fiscal year, in accordance to that model, is 1% increase on the water and 3% increase in the wastewater. And again, that would be in accordance to the, uh, the model study that we did previously with HDR engineering. Could you come? I mean, can you come up with the? Um, that's a five-year. Yes. Yes. Sir. Uh, I've got a history of the increase by fiscal year. If you like that, also. I'm, sure, I'm just curious what the increase in the five-year increase will be. Because I, this is one of those where I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have trouble with. Uh, I know residents out there are tired of <laughs> an increased water rates. You know, increased sewer rates and. Well, I guess we're going to have to do a real good selling job. Okay, on the water over the five year period is a 7% increase. <coughs> on the wastewater is a 16% increase. But, very substantial. but also recall that the city had frozen the rates for many years and were playing catch up in that process on our rate models. And uh, our, our taxes have increased. Well, our property taxes have not increased in the last several years. We have not, in, we have not increased property taxes. taxes. And one, one of the reasons, just for the commission's benefit, one of the reasons we haven't increased property taxes is because of the increases on the utility right. side. But our appraisals have increased. Yes, that, that So that we're, we are getting more money even by keeping our tax rate the same. Well, we have, and how many years have we been doing this? Uh, you know, even skipping the water. <coughs> we started doing the models back in, to my knowledge, uh, 05 06. That's the first year I came in, and they, they had been doing the models previously to that. Right. So it's every, pretty much every but, year. We but we're calling, <coughs> we're calling, just in wastewater, we jumped 20% because we had, for many years, not been addressing and keeping pace with it. Now, the water wastewater is an enterprise fund. It's self-contained. And we're charging the users of those water services and wastewater services and building the infrastructure that will flow with that so we can do the delivery of goods and services for that uh, book of business. If I could commission uh, one of the, it's best, I think, from a policy perspective to have smaller increases annually, one, two, three percent, <coughs> than it is to have 15, 20 percent increases every seven or eight years because you haven't increased them sufficiently. The other thing I want to point out is I think the commission passed the, the, the plan which forecasted these increases, so we're just complying with if I'm not mistaken, it happened before I was here. That's correct. It, complying with, not that the commission can't make a different decision, but it's complying with 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 a plan that was put into effect. This commission? No, no, not this commission, but well, a city commission. All right. uh, now, I'm not saying you can't make a different decision, but I'm just saying it was a plan that was put in effect by another commission, uh, adopted by another commission years ago. The other thing is... These costs are increasing in large part because of costs that are imposed upon cities by the federal government. Either additional uh, environmental requirements, treatment requirements, those continue to come down the pipeline. So to the, to the large extent, we're simply passing along costs that are passed along to us. Now, some of our costs, of course, are due to increases that, that we've decided upon, increases in employee pay, uh, increases, other increases that we as a as a city have approved, but, but by the lion's share of costs come to us because of additional uh, environmental uh, requirements imposed upon cities and other people that provide private, even private, not just cities, but private providers of 
water, and sewer surfaces. So, the large part, <coughs> uh, we can only go so far without increasing these costs because the costs are imposed upon us. They're not, they're not discretionary. You know what helps sometimes to me is get comparables. We've done that in the past, Mark, show where everybody went in our areas. I, I know we usually kind of end up right in the middle on that. But, and I know sometimes it's not fair that because we use well water, most of the uh, city of Chicago does we use buy water from, from uh, corporate tracing. But And I'm not sure how fair that is, but just to show what the rates are. And with the drought situation as it is, we might we might fare better than what we have in the past, I don't know. Well, droughts um, <clears throat> create opportunities and problems because I've been told that people give up on watering their own and sewer revenues go down. Yeah. I've been told by others that they water more so the revenues go up. I think on the average some people just give up. Yeah. And, and yet we've got fixed costs. So whether your revenues go up or down, we've got fixed costs. And uh, we've got debt service, we've got employees, we've, we've got a services system that we have. So um, I'm not here to tell the commission that it doesn't have any choices because it does, but I'm just saying we are simply, for the most part, passing along costs that are imposed upon us by other governments, mostly the federal government, and PC too. Okay. This is an introduction. Does anybody else have anything else they want to talk about? As far as, as, far as uh, talk about wastewater, and uh, we put in tons of money into our processing plants. Oh, correct. And we have to pay for that. That's correct. Usually that's in response to federal mandates. Yeah. yeah. That's a big fault right there. Yes. Yeah, that's one of the things when we first came on board in 2005. I think we borrowed close to $11 million, and out of that $11 million, Seven or eight million of it went to waste waste treatment. That's correct. Uh, CO two thousand five. Okay. Well, we've already talked about it, but I guess I'll go ahead and bring up the next item: consent introduction of an ordinance amending the City of Kingsville Code of Ordinances, Chapter Five, Article Three, Water, providing for an increase in water rates. Is there anything else anybody else wants to talk about this? Okay, this is an introduction of. Next item is consider introduction of an ordinance amending the fiscal year 2012-2013 budget of the general fund for city secretary certification and city manager travel and things. Well, Mary, you're already certified as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> you want the, oh, you want the certificate? <laughs> I can make one out. We just oh. sent one out of the state. Give me a printer. Mary, Commissioner, it's uh, an introduction to budget amendment that would increase the uh, city manager budget for the two thousand dollars. I believe you have a worksheet provided to you on the budget amendment. How are we going to pay for it? The uh, appraisal district, we had some savings that uh, we could reduce that line item to cover that expense. Okay. All right. Any questions? Where's it coming from, Mark? Uh, we had a, there was a little bit of a <coughs> rebate that came back on the cap on the fees that are charged on the appraisal district. So we had a little bit of savings uh, in our expected budget. So we're able to transfer that from that line item to cover this. Okay. All right, let's go to the next item. Consider introduction of orders amending the fiscal year 2012 2013 budget of the general fund for no, that city council training. That's where we were just went over. That's where the money's coming from. Uh, yes, sir. Also, in the same line item, for $2,000, we'll be funding a couple of thousand, uh, 2000 increase in commission. That would be $400 times the five members. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think if I could, uh, we're, we're now, I think, because of the discussion we've had in the past, allocating travel evenly among the commission members, including beginning with this this budget amendment. I'm proposing to retract $400 per member. And uh, in, in the budget that's being proposed for next fiscal year, we'll propose the same thing, that a set amount of money be proposed for each commission member. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Next item is consider introduction of an ordinance amending. Well, we already did that. Consider introduction of an ordinance amending the fiscal year 2012-2013 certificate of obligations, 2013 and 2011 fund budgets, and storm utility water utility fund budgets for street and drainage projects. Mayor Commissioner, um, I'll provide you with a, an overview of the sources of the original budget and then different projects that are provided. I'll provide a report sheet. So let me walk you through the introduction of the budget amendment and I'll walk through, through the details. The first one is uh, a reduction of the uh, Fund 65, which is our CO 2011, that we budgeted a portion for streets. And so we have projects that were originally budgeted, but we're able to reduce that a little bit. And then in Fund 68, which is our brand new CO that we passed in January, February, on the drainage projects portion, uh, that portion would be 566855 would be need to be increased in that one. And then we had originally in Fund 55, now to kind of walk you through what 55 is, 55 is the water, uh, the utility portion that we're collecting from the residents and the commercial come in, and those revenues are used for debt service to pay our debt service schedule. And originally, when we budgeted the projects, we didn't know if we were actually going to pass the, the CO that was proposed, but we went ahead and listed as expenditures, potential expenditures for the uh, 925000 now that we have the CO that was issued, uh, we've re we've moved those out to Fund 68 and uh, provided for the funding in there. Now I can walk you through. There's a spreadsheet that I provided, and we started out at 809,100 in the uh, Fund 65, and then I, I provided you with a list, and the list B is. To the asphalt streets and uh, expenditures projected fiscal year 13 at repriced hot mix dollars. And that's 630,151. And then I'll provide you with a schedule E that also had the street rejuvenation expenditures for rejuvenating for the July 11th through the end of the fiscal year, and that's 35,000. Then also there's expenditures for seal application and striping or lines. The 32,478 is Schedule D also provided. And then Schedule H is 75,000 for the, the patching, dural patcher, and the pro patcher. That comes up to a sum total of 772,629 projected expenditures for fiscal year 13. We had budgeted initially the 809,100, so that gave rise to the reduction in that one particular line item and funding of 36,471. Then also we had some projects uh, in the fund 65 for drainage that we don't need a budget amendment on at this time. And also moving down, we had uh, in Fund 68, which is the CO 2013 drainage portion, we had originally zero dollars budgeted at the beginning of this fiscal year. Then we have uh, 202,000, which is list A, which is a reclass, reclassing from concrete streets classification into drainage because we have the ability to utilize those funds. Now, if you think about the drainage as being part of the infrastructure, the streets, actually, concrete streets that are more permanent in nature are part of the skeleton for your drainage. So we can charge those to the funding available 
uh, on the uh, drainage. And then I provided you also with, with list F of 256,300 for a concrete intersection bridge uh, budgeted in fiscal year 12, but was not able to be completed in fiscal year 12. And uh, so those are also provided in the funding. And then there's a list also of list C, which is 108,555 for drainage projects listed, uh, restated with street list to be completed for the remainder of the fiscal year also. And that's a sum total of 566,855. And then so that, that gives rise to the budget amendment that's needed for fund 68 in relation to the drainage. The uh, there was also the reduction. We're pulling off the 925,000 that was originally budgeted in uh, Fund 055, and we're moving it to Fund 68. And we provide, we provide you with a list of the work to be performed, and I believe Charlie is Mr. Cardenas is here to uh, assist you with that list if you like. Sure, Charlie. <laughs> The, uh, the list before you is, is what we're going to finish out for the rest of the, uh, the fiscal year. Uh, and uh, we've already we've already done most of these uh, streets or half of the streets on uh, on this fiscal year, but we. So the bulk of it that's coming up is a lot of them has to do with the drainage uh, elements involved. And when Mr. Rushing was talking about on these concrete streets with uh, having the skeleton of the drainage, uh, we, we talk about the crown of the roadway that, that conveys water and then of course the curb and gutter section of the roadway. Then a lot of our improvements, uh, we have to come in and, and do those, uh, a lot of these street improvements, we have to come in and do those uh, drainage work. So, uh, that's that's the uh, the nature of uh, of this. As far as the list is concerned, uh, you, you'll you'll notice that uh, we we've done some of the uh, concrete streets already done in, in phase one. We're in the middle of this. Uh, actually, it's phase two. We're in the middle of phase three uh, concrete uh, streets that we're going to be working on uh, here pretty soon. You you approved the uh, last time. We approved the uh, or awarded the uh, the bid. And that was phase three, a couple of years ago, on concrete streets. Now, in the asphalt streets, we're going in, in uh, full blast on that, and we're in the middle of Shelton Street right now, uh, doing some asphalt work there. The rain did, uh, it's a blessing in some cases, but in, in my case, uh, it's a deterrent because I end up uh, being a little, uh, or we end up being a little bit delayed on, on some of this work uh, when, when the rain happens. We have some rain delays. If I could uh, add a management perspective to it, you'll recall we came before the city commission several months ago with at, at a workshop. And we talked about hot mix and street design and what we were doing wrong and what, what we wanted to do right and, and how we were going to try to get away from seal coat and go to hot mix because in the long run, hot mix is probably less expensive because you get longer life from your streets. In the short run, it's more expensive because you have to pay more to put it in, but in the long run. And I think I think what we wanted to do is we wanted to go to what's more effective in the long run. So essentially, this is the first budget amendment that you're being presented with that reflects the additional cost required to implement that new program for this fiscal year. We're going from a program that we thought would cost $809,000 to a program that's going to cost about 1.4 million, primarily because we're going to hot mix, and also because we're incorporating the stormwater drainage improvements into the street improvements. We agree that we don't want to come back years later, or we don't want to put in a new street and then come back anytime soon after that and tear up the street to put in stormwater drainage improvements. So we're doing them simultaneously. That's kind of slowing us down a little bit. I think you'll agree. Uh, and so while we budgeted for 60 blocks of street overlay improvement, which is about four miles, we're probably not going to get 60 blocks done, certainly not with the rain delays that we've had. 
and Northwest were trying to make the stormwater drainage, the curb and gutter improvements, uh, stormwater inlet improvements that we're making along the way. But it's a smarter way to approach it. It's more expensive, it's smarter. It's more expensive in the short run, smarter in the long run, and it's less expensive in the long run. So unfortunately, we're in a position where we have to pay the cost today to realize the benefits several years down the road. And um, so you're, you're going to see some additional costs come through. But we think this will get us through the end of this fiscal year. Any questions? Sure, the list you provided us, uh, is that uh, the column on the left, is that numerically the way you're going to repair the streets or are you just going to hop around? That's, you're, that's correct. That, uh, that, that's not in, in any order. Okay. Uh, it is. We do have a... Uh, prioritized? We, we do have a system where we have prioritized uh, where we, we're, we're posting that. Uh, we're updating it weekly, by the way. Uh, on the website, uh, we're, we're, we've already put it on the website. We put a map on the website of what streets we're going to do this fiscal year, and as we're updating it, uh, the colors changing on that street, you know, like Calvin and stuff like that. Right. And that way, uh, folks could see if they're in this fiscal year, uh, someone could get on the website and say, "Hey, look, my streets in red. Um, that's scheduled to be replaced this year, and once it turns blue, we, we've gone and fixed it." Uh, there's also, we also have a, a spreadsheet on there that uh, had the schedule. Now, we changed that up uh, last week um, according to this new budgeting. We figured out, hey, we're not going to, we're not going to do all 60 blocks this fiscal year. So let's remove XYZ blocks or XYZ streets. We're still going to finish it in this season. And there's a difference between fiscal year and, and, and <clears throat> street season. And my goal is we're still going to complete those streets this season uh, just might not be in the fiscal year. Uh, uh, that that is that is a commitment we've made to the taxpayers, and that's the commitment that uh, we're going to continue. Uh, and it's scheduled on there what streets and when they're coming in. Now we have to tweak it up a little bit. I think the next one uh, that we have to move up is uh, Santa Cruz between Wells and Armstrong. Uh, this is a, this is like a little half block block area that we're gonna we're gonna do it here soon once we're done with Shelton. That had to be moved up. Uh, we're, we're, we're doing some other design work for some of the drainage. Um, if, it's a, if it's above $50,000 of drainage work, we're going to have to go out for bids. We're going to have to come up with our own set of plans. And we're doing that in-house. You know, I'm not going out with a consultant to do the set of plans. You know, I'm more capable of, of doing it ourselves, and I'm confident in our engineering department to come up with those set of plans. So we're going to come up with set of plans and bid that out. Uh, there's some, some projects that, that we're very minute as far as the drainage concerned, like the Shelton project that we're working on right now. We were able to get three quotes and get get one contractor out and do you know a couple of hundred dollars worth of uh, curb and gutter work. But uh, there are some streets out there that we're going to really have to replace the curb and gutter. So those are some of the factors that said, okay, we're going to have to move this out of this fiscal year. But again, just fiscal year, we're still going to continue doing that work. Our commitment is to doing that work for this season. So uh, on this list, no, it's not on priority, sir. Um, it, 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 it's just you know broken down in projects. Uh, if, if you kind of see the scheme of things, so the first list is A's, it is the concrete repairs, and then we go to asphalt, and then there are some drainage work on those asphalt streets, and then you'll go for some more maintenance of seal coating and some rejuvenator stuff, and then and then some the phase three of the concrete street as well. So that's kind of how the priority was on the list as by the funding, uh, not so much as far as the priority, what street's going to get uh, hit first. But we do have a street team uh, that comes together bi-weekly and we talk about what streets are going to get uh, priority as far as work scheduling is concerned. Well, our marriage are making to you, sir. There's been complaints about potholes. How is that being addressed in the meantime? Absolutely. Uh, potholes, we do have a, a, a schedule uh, that we, one, we go around zones, two, we go around uh, major corridors that we want to take care of. Uh, so we do have a schematic or uh, scheme of things of, of how we're addressing potholes. Um, I, I can tell you this, and I think we've already addressed this school's coming up. Uh, soon, so we're going to start looking at the school areas uh, 
to do <coughs> to do a blitz, so to speak, on on the schools and not just the potholes, but we're going to look at their crosswalks and assignments as well. Um, yes, uh, potholes is a problem. We do, and and you'll see that we we are budgeting X amount of dollars for the dirt patch. And we're getting that machine, and and, and we'll get that machine to good use. I mean, it's been out there, and and uh, we have a, a, a dedicated crew that's just on potholes and just on the dirt patch and cold mix. The cold mix and dirt patch are two different methods. The dirt patch is a more permanent patch, if you will, than the cold mix, but the cold mix uh, is like a band-aid. Um, we do have a dedicated crew on the dirt patch that, that's doing the, 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 the zones, you know, just like the brush zones, we're doing the same thing there. But at the same time, uh, every week we're hitting a, a different dirt effect. And then we'll, we'll go back, it's like a, maybe a six week a six, actually a monthly cycle that after about four or five months we'll go back to the same thoroughfare. Unless it's a hazard. If it's a big hazard uh, or it's a big pothole that just created and you're going to see something that happened from last week's rains uh, and the condition of our streets. Uh, the, the rains and, and the water and it gets in the cracks and stuff and it pumps that stuff out and you'll see some fresh ones. Just this morning I saw some fresh ones with the city manager brought it to my attention. Uh, and, and there's some that are that are there are some priorities, and, and especially on these thoroughfares. You know, we'll see them on 6th Street. We want to take care of the ones on 6th Street. We want to take care of the ones that are going to be on Corral or 14th or the heavy traffic areas. It's the ones we want to tackle first. So we'll get out of our schedule to do those. And then we'll hit the residential streets and the zones as well. Wait, Charlie, uh, um, I, don't, I don't know if I remember, but correct me. Is there a play somewhere in the website or um, the report that's advising us which where the potholes are getting fixed? Is that good done? question? No, there's not, and and I apologize. What we have on the website is the street construction schedule. And the only reason I'm asking is because I, I mean, obviously we get bombarded. I get bombarded all the time on potholes, and I, you know, which ones are you working on? We can definitely I, I have no we, idea. That's, a, that's how to respond. You know. You know, I haven't seen the ones that are fixed. You know, that, that's it. That's it. <laughs> you know, maybe I'm missing it. We're doing such a good job that. Uh, well, I'm staying on this. I'm staying on this. I'm staying on this. We're too fast for you. No, that's a good. That's a good comment, and I really appreciate that. Uh, again, that's something that we can bring up to the street team meeting, and it's something we can put on the website. If I'm saying we're going through zones, we can certainly put up a map and say this is the zone we're filling in potholes this week. And when we, when we say zones, again, we're, we're hitting the residential streets. But when we, when we say the thoroughfare, uh, you know, this is the, where we're at on the thoroughfare. So we could definitely put that schedule, that potholding schedule, uh, on the website and, and discuss it further on our street team. And that's good. Thanks. Good, good observation. Uh, any other questions? If not, that's an introduction. I'm going to go to the next item. Consider accepting grant. And out of $3,000 from the uh, Music Foundation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Union Pacific Founda uh, Foundation Board uh, has approved a grant in the amount of $3,000 to keep Kingsville beautiful to support future cleanups. Okay, is there a motion on this? So moved. Second, motion made by Commissioner Fainey to accept this money accepted by both Commissioner Fainey and Commissioner Garcia. We have a tradition here at this commission that we never turn money down. <laughs> 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 Roll call vote. Commissioner Fainey? Yes. Commissioner Garcia? Yes. Commissioner Luber? Yes. Commissioner Fickles? Yes. Mayor Peeney? Yes. Next, uh, next is an intervention item amending the ordinance. This year, 2012-2013 general fund budget for the city of Kingsville to accept the grant from the foundation for Kingsville, two Kingsville beautiful projections and community appearance department. That's just an introduction item. Does anybody have any questions about that? Okay. Then we'll go to the next item. It's an introduction of the ordinance amending the fiscal year 2012-2013 general fund budget for community parents to fund demolition projects through the remaining fiscal year. Mayor, uh, commissioners, uh, you have before you an introduction of uh, an item that would uh, appropriate $35,830. Uh, and it would be for the 
property owned abatement agreements for July, August, and September. For July, it was $12,730. August, it was $4,240. And September, is $7,420. And the sum total of those is $24,390. In addition, there's another $11,440, which are for two different demolitions. One is for the water tank, and the other one is for the old fire training building to be taken down. Thank goodness. And some total, that's 11,040 for the 35,834. Okay. Yes, sir. <clears throat> that's an introduction item. I think it's pretty self explanatory where the money's coming from. And and what the projects are. So, does anybody have any questions? No questions, and we'll go to the next item. Consider a request from the county to fund up to one third of the estimated $17,375 cost to repair the equipment farm at L.E. Ramey County Golf Course, which is contingent on the remaining funding being obtained from other sources. Yeah. <clears throat> the, uh, no, this is yours and mine, Mark. Yeah. The, uh, the golf course manager has spoken to several of us, I think, including me, uh, about <clears throat> the one third of the proposed cost of renovating the shed where they keep the uh, golf course. Uh, his explanation is pretty straightforward. And our cost, of course, which is on the next agenda item, would be 5792 But um, it's uh, just something they've requested our assistance with. We've we typically try to assist with the golf course from time to time, whether it be uh, sprinkler heads or running a sewer line to the bathroom so it's no longer on septic, or the, the uh, utility allowance. And so that uh, staff's proposal is to Who, uh, provide assistance here. Do you have the 57 Yes, we do, sir. Yeah, it's on the next agenda item, but it's uh, uh, some additional revenues that we, um, no, I guess it's expense savings. Yes, sir. Uh, so, yes, we've got it in our existing budget. Now, uh, this is going to be a new roof. It's not going to be something that's going to patch. We're not, mm, no, it's going to be a new boy in it, are we? No, it's going to be a new one. It's going to be a panel of 125 feet long. Uh, 25 feet in width, there's 50 panels, it's got to be replaced in the warehouse, in the car barn warehouse. Uh, so it'll be all brand new roof? Yes, sir. Starting from the pond all the way to the edge. And you got your bid from yeah. Gillespie? From the, I got it from Gillespie and I got it from Mr. Billy T. Yeah. Tiffy, uh, which his bid was substantially more than uh, the Rusty's. That's why I suggest that, that one go with the Lopez. Any questions about this? <coughs> the reason, one, one of the main reasons I want to do something with this roof is nothing has been done since probably 19, 1974, 1975 when it built. Second of all, we're housing a little bit over $400,000 worth of equipment in that building. Third is my maintenance crew came in to eat lunch. When it's raining outside, it's like all the water coming in. So I, I was compelled to do something about it. And the only way I could do it was suggest that if Fairfax County, Ella Rain, and the city can come together a third apiece, we can accomplish this task. That wouldn't cost a whole bunch of money for anybody individually. <coughs> did, did the county pass this to that? Yes, the county passed it to me. They agreed with In good humor, did they pass it? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> the, the shed itself, uh, is there a wood frame shell? Shed or a pole metal? Pole metal? Pole metal. Pole metal. Okay, okay. the ground all the way up to the top. You can go and break off once in a while. <laughs> I apologize. I'm going to go to the shed. Well, yeah, that's a power point. <laughs> It's a little bit of feet long. I've never hit a ball to the shed. The barn. The barn. I've never hit the barn yet. 
helpful. But in, in the recent recent weeks, I have purchased three three pieces of equipment more to assist me to maintain the golf course, to stay on top of all the cutting. Uh, with the help of the city, that they do give uh, hours to help me. Favor uh, County does the same thing. We'll be able to stay on top of it. Obviously, we had three days of good rain. Tomorrow morning is the first day. First, get all my cool bags and start cutting grass again. Yeah. Get after it. <coughs> Make a motion we approve the cost number for repair. Second. The motion made by Commissioner Payne to approve these expenses to, to put on a new roof. Yeah. Yeah. The, the board of the golf course seconded by both Commissioner Garcia and Commissioner Payne. Any other discussion? Roll call vote. Commissioner Garcia? Yes. Commissioner Lubert? Yes. Commissioner Beckles? Yes. Commissioner Payne? Yes. Mayor Payne? Yes, next item is consider introduction of ordinance amending the fiscal year 2012 2013 budget for the general fund to assist with repair costs to the equipment barn at Alleghany County Golf Course. Here, Commissioner, seeking the introduction of the budget amendment to agenda item number 24 that was just presented. Our third of the $17,375 will be $5,792. Introduction item. Okay. <coughs> Does anybody have any questions? It's pretty self explanatory. Yeah, I'm sorry to keep you so long. Man, you, you came to our record setting meeting. <laughs> <laughs> sorry to keep you so long. No problem. I appreciate it, sir. Right, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Next time is consider introduction of an ordinance amending the fiscal year 2012 2013 general fund budget for the community appearance of purchase benches and litter recycling and supplements for the downtown area. Um, you have behind this budget amendment a list of the items that equal the $21,175 uh, uh, in total, of which we're, we already have $400 that have, that have come in for that purpose, which leaves us uh, $14,775 that we need to come up with. The, this would include five benches. Five plaques and the holders that were associated with that, and then um, an additional 15 uh, trash cans or uh, trash receptacles that will be in this project for the, the purchases that we need. Uh, Cynthia Martin, I believe, is here if you want to walk through some of the details or, or whatever you want. Yeah. Any questions? About the trash cans? Yes, sir. <laughs> 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 No, the current benches the current benches have been um, renovated. The slats replaced and refinished. So these would be additional benches. They would go um, say in front of the Texas Theater and to Solar Alone down further than four hundred block because the benches currently are grouped around uh, sixth and Clayburg and seventh and Clayburg. Intersections where the bump outs were finished. There really aren't any other benches anywhere. Um, it's not going to look very cohesive. That's not going to look very cohesive have these benches on the other ones. Um, no, it won't. Um, what brought forward the attention to the, the benches was that we had you know, the Chamber of Commerce came forward wanting to donate the bench. Which is great, like the mayor said, we don't turn down any <laughs> any money, so maybe that was good. Except that we're looking forward to the, our project where we finish the streets, the sidewalks, and that includes street furniture all the way from 4 to 11. So we thought this would be the opportunity to come forward with a, a plan, you know, a suite of street furniture picked out in advance so that when people step forward to donate something, they'll say, okay, here, let's donate this so it's all alike and it's all good quality furnishings. Yeah, but the streets, how long is it going to take to do the three new streets? Quite a lot. So we're going to have some benches there, some benches here. That's just, that's not yes. good. Well, it, that we, need to, we need to really work on trying to get it 
Yeah. If I could, uh, just a few comments. I, I've been meeting with Alice Byers, and Alice was, she's a head, she, yeah. she chairs KKB, and she's, uh, she, she works with leadership, uh, King, leadership Kingsville, and the Chamber of Commerce. And so, um, she and I have worked together to try to map out a plan, and Alice told me that uh, her membership would prefer to focus on Main Street. In other words, what's the mission for KKB? Are they going to be about planting trees, or what? What are they? What are they about? And so, uh, and I wanted to know what they were going to be about because the city is also pursuing those same things. We want to beautify downtown. We want to do some of the same things they want to do. So she and I got together and agreed, more or less, that that we would focus on benches and trash cans <coughs> and uh, ultimately recycling containers. And we wanted a consistent look. Now, so we had a choice. We want to wait and for the three or four or five years or however long it's going to be until we get downtown the street, the streetscape done. We're doing the engineering now, but do we want to wait until after the the new streets are in before we put in new benches. I told her I would like to proceed now because as long as we put the, the benches in a place where they can be easily removed and, and put back once the street repair is done, and we're striving for a consistent look. Uh, we've, we've looked at all kinds of different designs, and I think we have a consistent look. The, the, the wood slatted benches will probably ultimately disappear. And we'll probably we're, we're trying to conform to the benches that are now being proposed. Why aren't we just getting moving the wooden slat benches somewhere else and replacing them too? Oh, we can. We can do that. We can do that. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's places yeah. we could put them in. The sure. Urban landscape. The other thing was uh, at the KKB meeting, you had you showed a picture of the double garbage can. It was mm -hmm. recycling on one side and trash on the other. Yes. That looked quite nice because. This one here, you're probably going to get more trash in both sides, whereas if you have separate, you have a good, good chance, and they were very attractive. You'd have a better chance of getting your recycling and your trash separated, and look nice. I was looking forward to having those big bellies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh... It might be good down at the park. <laughs> Maybe on the city streets. They're pretty cool. They were in Boston and they were in the radar. They're on the main dragon. They're on the main dragon. The main dragon. Oh, yeah, the radar. Lots of them. And requires no, very little yeah. Uh, yeah. maintenance. Alice also has people, I think it's at uh, Leadership Kingsville, who want to donate trees. And uh, all they're asking for is a little plaque that would go along to acknowledge the person who donated the money for the tree. So they're not going to provide the plaque themselves. Uh, I think it, well, I think it's part of yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. All right, that was an introduction, Adam. Yeah. And but you ever twenty-five items? <laughs> <laughs> That's all the business we have to see here. <laughs>